Hello, and welcome to part 20 of the Johnny Blender 2.0 series. In this section, we're going to hopefully finish up with our particle hair. We'll go ahead and do the, the rest of the head and kind of get that arranged the way we want. Uh, we just finished up with the eyebrows and the eyelashes. So it's only natural to go ahead and finish up the rest of the head. We're going to do this a little bit differently, though. With the eyebrows and eyelashes, we just basically we just basically painted them in where we wanted. But for the scalp here, I'm going to use a different technique. So let me go ahead and turn off those visibilities, the visibility of the eyebrows and eyelashes there. And I'm going to go into this object data setting. And remember when we created the UV textures, well, we're going to do kind of the same thing. We're going to create what's called a vertex group. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit plus there and go ahead and name this scalp. Okay. And now I'm going to go into the weight paint mode. And this is basically where I can distinguish where I want the influence of this vertex group to be. For example, right now everything's blue, so that means there is nothing applied to this vertex group. But if I go ahead and swipe across, across uh, a swipe of paint there across there, uh, it's going to say, okay, these this green section is on this uh, on this vertex group, but it's not really that strong. But the more you paint, it starts turning towards red, and red, solid red, means that this these ver vertices are definitely in this group. But it you know the further it gets towards blue, the more it fades towards blue, it, it starts tapering off, and it's not quite as strong there. So, so anyways, that's kind of a brief. Uh, explanation of that. I want to go ahead and paint in the scalp. Okay, it's got X mirror turned on, so it does both sides at the same time. Now, a quick way you can do this, you can either just sit there and paint everything that you want, which, you know, it doesn't take too long, but an even quicker way, if we go into uh, tab into edit mode, we can make sure all the everything's deselected and then just you can either grab your your uh, select paint with the by pressing C and just click and paint over all the vertices you want, which is basically the same thing as painting the weights. Um, or you can just hit B, click and drag, and just select a group of them at a time. So we'll just do that. And now we're going to apply this to our particle hair, or the particle hair is going to be applied to this, but uh, you would think that if, say, for example, you select here, then our particle hair is going to be put down inside these vertices. But that would really only apply if it were uh, being applied to the faces rather than the, the vertex group, say, if we could have a face group over here. But uh, what it does is it just takes these vertices here and applies that, applies that particle around that. So in this particular setup, you would have... Uh, all of that particle hair coming basically outside around here, which might look good up here, but it's not going to look good right here where the where the sideburns would start. So let's go ahead and deselect some of these, and let's select down here. Go ahead and hit C. I'll just go ahead and paint them on there, and then maybe up here, and these will be fine as well. and then it'll fill in down here. Now you don't have to worry about it going past the next one. For example, like these are selected so it's going to put particles around them, but it's not going to put them so far around them that they come past a connecting vertex. So if I went ahead and selected these, it's going to put them all around in here, which is pretty much what I want. Some sideburns there go up around the ear. Could even come a little closer to the ear since we have so many loops there around it. And go ahead and select further down around it there. Okay. And I need to go ahead and do the same thing over on this side. There's no mirror modifier for selecting vertices, I don't think so. Um don't really want my hair coming up down in here, so let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and hit C and then hold on Alt and just paint 
paint that out. So now we'll have our hair coming basically around this here. Now I'm not not 100% sure I want it right there, but oops, I do that. Gotta be careful where you're clicking. But uh, that will probably be okay. So now we have all these selected. We just go over here to our vertex group and just hit assign. And now when we tab out, it'll be back into the into the uh, weight paint, and you can see that everything that's red is 100% inside that vertex group. Now this will probably be fine, but um, some areas you might want it to taper out a little bit more gradually, like maybe on the back of the neck. So you can either kind of just paint that in and kind of, you know, touch it up here and there. Or there's another brush that's called Blur, and you can just go along the edges of something that's already there, like the red, and it'll just kind of blur it with what's around it like so. It'll kind of fade it into the blue area there. Okay. Okay, so that'll work. Let's go ahead and save, and we'll go, pop back to object mode, and now we'll go over to our hair, our particle settings, and we'll add a third, and this one will be head hair, okay? Also the type is going to be hair, and this time we'll leave the amount at a thousand, might even make it more, but uh, we need to tell it where, we need to tell it to be applied to that vertex group that we just made, so we go way down here to vertex groups, and we want that to be applied to the density of the hair. So you just click on that empty space there, go up and click scalp, and boom, it's applied to where it should be. Now it's way too long, so again we go up to the velocity, set the normal down, probably about, maybe about right there. Kind of a little bit of a long hair, but not not too afro-ish. Of course, we'll have to. Uh, well, you can do an afro if you like, but uh, mine's going to be combed like, uh, well, kind of like my hair because it's going off of me. So, um, okay, so we kind of got this set up the way we want. Um, before we start painting it, let's go ahead and set up some of these render settings. We also want this to be strand render, and we're going to be applying a third material to this. So let's go ahead and pop that up to material three, and we'll go ahead and save. And now let's just go ahead and go into our particle mode here and scroll up here so we can see our controls. And this I'm going to change the length down to shrink and I'm just going to brush around back here. Let the top of the head have longer hair than the sides and back. And since it kind of puts these in there at random, they're not really going to be uh, symmetrical so the the mirror modifier is not really going to be doing anything at this point now one thing you can do to to have it do something is just grab the cut thing the, the cut tool there and we can go ahead and just cut away half of the hair here on the head and then there's a setting right here under particle mirror well I guess we have to hit A to select all of them and then particle mirror and it's going to go ahead and copy those exactly over so now we deselect everything. Now everything we do on this side will be automatically copied over. So let's go ahead and set this up. And I want to go ahead and make sure I'm on the path edit mode rather than the tip mode because this will look a little bit better if it's the hole here instead of just kind of the... Let's kind of give this, give him maybe like a rock star, rock star haircut. Kind of get it just a general shape combed out here. And then we'll lengthen it. Go to grow. Maybe similar to like uh, Hugh Jackman on as Wolverine on X-Men or something. Not not really the you know the uh, 
Wolverine ears types of thing coming out, but the sort of the longer hair. And one one issue you might come into is like, well, I don't want my haircut to be perfectly symmetrical, and the mirror is making it like that. Well, you can kind of get it basically the shape you want, and then just bing, just go ahead and turn it off, and you can style it however you want them. So this is this is kind of the place where you can just have fun with different hairstyles. And <laughs> who knows, it might be if you can create a model that looks, you know, looks real enough, looks lifelike enough, you can test out hairstyles on in this in 3D before you actually go physically to the barbershop or the salon and get a haircut. So it might be a good easy way to kind of test out some styles. Now this is kind of hard to see what it's going to look like because you can see all of the hair through the head is kind of being x-rayed so um, let's go ahead and click this little guy right here and it's going to limit the selection to visible actually useful in this scenario but um, so now we can kind of see what it's going to look like and it's kind of looking a little too what I like to call too emo-ish <laughs> not quite the style I'm wanting to go for. However, now it kind of wants to lag a little bit. It's not really going as smooth as it was. Let's turn that back. I think with only showing half of it, it would be behaving a little bit better. But you can go in and get as much detail as you want. Just got to have the patience. Maybe let's go to the top view, maybe kind of comb this around a little bit. Okay, now the back, control one goes to the back view. It's not really looking too, too natural here, so let's grab the length, go ahead and grow it a little bit here in the middle, and then we can grab the cut and kind of just do a nice clean cut along there. That's a little bit better. And then we can comb it. Okay, let's go back to edit mode now, or object mode, and we'll start playing with some materials and see see what this is going to look like. Let's go ahead and save this. Oops. Well, crap. I just saved over part 19. Um, let me go ahead and save as part 20. Save. And let me go ahead and open part 19 back up. And I'm going to, I think the only difference that I did was I just added this head hair and the vertex group pink. So now part 19 is intact again. Save and open up 20 again. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our materials tab. And let's save ourselves a little bit of work. Let's just copy this browse eyelashes and go ahead and hit the little number two there. The two means that it's applied to two separate, um, or it's being applied twice, basically. We have it, if you had it on another model or something too, you'd see three, and just however many times it shows up in this viewport on any model, it adds it to the, the number here. So right now it's, it's doubled itself, but I don't want the exact copy. I want it, uh, you know, t it's, its own version, basically. So I'll just hit that number two and I'll just add a, it'll rename it to .001 so I can go ahead and type in hair there now and we'll go to our texture settings as well and you can see it's also doing the same thing here so since this is a totally different material I don't need to copy this down and rename it here I'll just just rename it right here and let's go ahead and name this well that's not important that we name that I don't think we just we as long as we name our main materials it'll be fine so um, these settings are pretty well, 
pretty much the way we need them to be. I don't think I need to edit it too much. We might tweak it here in a few minutes. But uh, the main thing I need to do is change the color of the hair. So I guess I do need to come down and say no onto the color. But speaking of color, let's go ahead and create a new texture and do the same thing we did with the alpha map there and go to blend. Turn on the color ramp. Change this all the way up to 1% alpha or 100%, 1.0. And let's change the color now. Let's make this sort of not quite black, but maybe like a real dark, kind of a grayish brown. Kind of like my hair color. When it's wet, it looks black, but when it's well, when it's not wet, it doesn't quite have that brown look or that black look to it anymore. Lighten this up just a little. Okay, and in this you can do, you know, if you if your model has like bleached hair that has started to grow out, well, you can change the colors here, like make this a little darker here, fading into the blonde or whatever. And we need to set the mapping to be strand. Okay, and set to color, and we're good to go. So let's uh, let's give this a look and see what it's going to look like. Go to our camera view and just F12. May not show that many because we don't have any children applied to it. It doesn't show very many at all, does it? It's like Gollum or something's very balding. But you can kind of see the vague, the the color in there a little bit. So let's uh, let's do the same thing we did with the eyebrows and and eyelashes. We'll go to our uh, our particle settings here. I'll go ahead and save this just in case we get that image to small error again. And let's go ahead and collapse the render, go down to children. And now that we've applied this to that vertex group, instead of particles, we can go to faces. And this will kind of do it around the faces that surround those particles that we put on there. Okay, so this is where we can get a little bit of some variety in there. Remember, if we go to the um, the random, where is that at here? Oh, it's on display, isn't it? Or is it render? Yeah, there we go. There we go. It'll have a lot more natural look to it. Unless you just got a fresh haircut, you're going to have some random length to your hair there. So, Okay, so what this is doing, it's giving 100 strands, or 100 children to each strand. And that's probably fine. Um, it might, it'll probably take a little bit longer to render, so maybe I'll pause the recorder as it's going. But a uh, couple of more settings we can play with. Actually, we can do this on the on the eyebrows and eyelashes as well. The clump, what that does is it kind of makes it look a little bit more wet. If you max it out, you can see it kind of just puts everything like your hair is wet and it's kind of clumping together, sticking together, and the shape kind of depends on where the clump is, if it's at the very base or at the very tip. And you can control how much clump is coming up from the tip and from the base, so on and so forth. I typically use leave the shape pretty much alone, and then the clump, I don't, I rarely put it up to 100%, but unless, you know, it's, it needs to have wet hair, so about 0.35 will be fine. And you know what, let's go ahead and turn on our eyebrows and eyelashes. Go ahead and save that. And just go ahead and turn on some clump for them also. I've got to select the right ones here. Let's collapse these. Eyelashes. Clump those up just a little bit. And brows. There we go. Clump those a little bit too. Okay. Let's go ahead and save. And uh, let's go ahead and see what this is going to look like now with the thicker hair. Or maybe it's not really thicker, it's just uh, more there. Eh, 
and I can already tell right here it's going to be way too light. And it's still really thin. And the hairstyle is not really exactly something I'm happy with. So, And it's not throwing a shadow. Remember, I turned the shadow settings off for the eyebrows and eyelashes. So let's go back to our material settings here. Make sure we have hair selected. And let's go down to shadow. Let's go ahead and turn these guys back on. There we go. And we'll go to our texture settings here. And that's really dark as it is. I don't know why it showed up so light. Maybe it was because it doesn't have any shadows applied. But let's go ahead and darken it up just a little bit more. Okay. And one other thing we can do to help it look a little bit thicker is go back to our strand settings and change the size right here. We're going to leave the tip about the same, but we can bump that root up some more. Let's put that all the way at 1. And we'll go ahead and save. And you know what? Let's go in and let's change this. Oops. Got to make sure we're selected the right particle system there. Let's go ahead and and uh, edit our our head hair here a little bit. Maybe a little bit more conservative. Maybe kind of brushed back behind the ears. About like so. Now, if you find your your model is kind of too thin, the hair is too thin in some areas, we can do like we did on the eyebrows and excuse me, the eyebrows and eyelashes, we can go ahead and just paint some more in. So I might need to do that up there on the on the front of the head. Okay, now this is a good good time to use that puff that we were looking at earlier. Just kind of puff that the top of the hair out just a little bit. And then grab the comb again. Just use the tips this time. Kind of sweep that on back. Oops, now it's coming way out to the sides. Pat that back into place. Okay, now um, this also might be helpful if we could see the children and how, how thick it's actually going to be rather than just all these little preview particles. So the way we do that is go down here, right here where you see children, go ahead and check that and I'll go ahead and draw those on there and you can see a little bit better how that's going to look. So let's grab the particle system there, or the uh, the path edit. Let's go ahead and try to start shaping this up a little bit better. And I want to go ahead and throw in maybe a little bit of a curve to it here. Let's go ahead and paint in some more hairs up here. That's way too thin there on top. So let's go to Add. And let's make our size look quite a bit bigger, about like so. And let's set our count up to uh, 10 will probably be fine. Make sure interpolate is still turned on. And we'll go ahead and start painting that in there. A lot easier, to th a lot easier than doing hair plugs or <laughs> a hair transplant or something like that. Be nice the older you get if you could actually do something like this. Maybe in the future. And I guess if we go ahead and turn the mirror, X mirror back on, it'll do both sides at the same time that we're painting in here. Save us a little bit of work. Oh, 
Okay. So I think that's probably going to be fine. Let's go back to object mode. And I don't know that I would ever actually wear my hair <laughs> like that. It looks a little... Ah, that forehead's still really high. Maybe we can... comb some of this back out. Maybe give it a little bit of a superhero-ish. Not maybe a modern superhero with the... modern haircut and everything but like one from the one from the 20s or 30s or something okay let's see what that looks like yeah it looks a little bit better okay let's go ahead and save and let's do a test render here I'm not sure if I'm gonna like that but we'll see what it looks like Go ahead and pause the recorder. Oh, there it goes. And you can see that it's throwing a shadow now, so it should look a lot more realistic there. Maybe too much of a shadow. Okay, that's uh, that's not too bad. Um, might need to mess with some of the shadow settings, but uh, I guess overall the hair looks pretty decent. Um, one more thing before before I turn this over to part 21. Um, there is something you can add to the hair to make it look a little bit more lifelike, kind of like the skin. Go ahead and save. And that is some sur subsurface scattering. Um, now, this kind of acts the same as the as everywhere else. If it's it just allows more light to pass through it, uh, pass through the hair. Um, so let's give it some settings here. Let's get uh, let's try skin too, kind of like we did on the on the uh, the actual skin. Now, one thing when you're messing with the particles and you turn on the subsurface scattering, I found you have to set the texture all the way up to one otherwise it'll be all white it's just gonna shine white through it so let's bump that scale down to about 0.07 would be fine I'm gonna go ahead and save and while I'm at it let me go ahead and see if I can adjust some of these shadow settings um, set the size the sample buffer size up to 5000 and let's do the same thing over on this side 5,000 and maybe the samples up to let's try four on each one instead of three and we'll go ahead and save and let's go ahead and angle our camera a little bit better hit the period button to rotate that we'll just kind of get centered up in the scene there maybe zoom out just a little okay now one more thing before I hit render I noticed that the eyebrows uh, looked a little flat against the head so let's uh, let's tweak those just a little bit. Let's go to our eyebrows. Oops. Here's one thing that you might discover sometimes you might accidentally do. You double click on a menu and it disappears. You're like, oh no. Well, just hit the little plus sign right there and it'll, it'll reappear. No big deal. So just double click and it. Well, that's not doing it now, of course. Or I guess if you click and drag it, it'll disappear. There we go. Um, so, anyways, where was I? Particle mode for the eyebrows. Let's puff those out just a little bit. Maybe set that strength way down. Okay. Now we'll come back. And that looks a little bit better. So let's go ahead and save. Go to camera view and let's do save one more time and let's go ahead and do a test render. And since we changed some of the shadow settings and the 
subsurface scattering for the hair, it's going to take a little bit longer to render. Not a whole lot. Well, those eyebrows are really getting ugly, aren't they? Okay, but I guess our head hair looks pretty decent. Uh, we'll get back in and maybe in the next section, part 20, we'll play with these uh, eyebrows just a little bit more and then maybe we'll start working on uh, maybe giving him a little bit of clothing here around his shoulders and neck. So anyway, so that's all of part 20. Thanks for watching and I will see you in part 21.